Bright Suns, everyone. Today, we're here to give you the uncensored, unedited review of our experience at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That's right. So this is going to be all one take. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, it's going to be just a flow of thought. We're going to show everything that we've purchased mm -hmm. and then talk about like a very honest review of our experience uh, the day after, because we're already seeing some issues, even as we were just setting up for this recording. And so let's start with, first of all, when we went in, we're all major Star Wars fans. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was, it had to be, there was very high expectation to, for it to reach for us. Yeah. And I think it, for overall, it met yeah. those expectations. Definitely, um, you know, growing up with the movies and everything, when I heard that they were going to make a Star Wars land at Disneyland, it was, I was excited, but at the same time, also very cautious because mm -hmm. there's so many ways that they could have gotten this land wrong. Yes. There, there are many things, little things that they could have done that would have upset me. Mm -hmm. And I know it would have upset many fans. So, but I feel after coming back, I feel like they they did they, they, they did it justice. I think so too. So really what what I took away uh, from this experience is that unlike Star Tours, right. Hyperspace Mountain, uh, other versions of a theme in, in the theme park, uh, like attractions based off of Star Wars, those are always like the Skywalker stories. Right. Right. And it's always like you're just sitting and watching someone else's story. It's very much like when you're watching the movies. But what they did with this, with Black Spire Outpost, is that you are building your own story. And depending on just how immersive you want the experience to be, you'll, you'll get it back. Mm -hmm. Now, well, before Mr. E, what are, what are your thoughts on like, you know, going into it? Uh, going into it, mm -hmm. uh, worried it was just going to be a money grab, mm -hmm. um, but it turned out, you know, they were doing it for the fans, and I thought that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just going to check to make sure the audio, just because I don't see it displayed. It's 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 on. It's on. Keep talking. Keep talking. All right. There we go. That way, I see the audio. So, <clears throat> I think I think yeah I I, I think. Um, Everything about this land, like you can tell, the Imagineers who created it were definitely huge Star Wars fans, <laughs> yes. because they literally everywhere you go, there are small, minute details that just add to the experience. Yeah. And like Thomas said, depending on how you want to go about this land, whether you want to have full immersion, mm -hmm. semi-immersion, or you literally just think it's another land at Disneyland, yeah. you will get that experience that you want. For example, we went to basically almost like full-on experiences yeah. you know we learned some of the language we interacted with people as if they were there like yep. as if we were there mm -hmm. because we were mm -hmm. we were there yeah we, were there. we even we were dressed up that way um we we like created like a story behind we didn't share in the videos of the story but like but we will we, we will like we were smugglers like my character was really obsessed with the rebels and, and Josue's character was like, I mean, I, I was just money hungry, so yeah. <laughs> I, I, I side with whoever pays more, and mm -hmm. unfortunately that's the first order, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not fully affiliated with them, but, you know. And Mr. E? Uh, my guy was just a big fan of Han Solo. <laughs> and, uh, San Holo. San, San Holo. Holo. So that, that's, what we, that's what we did. Like, we went in because we knew that, like, as it was being advertised, like, if you went in, you had to be immersed. Right, yeah. So, with that in mind, the immersiveness factor is really, really expensive. I think huh. that if you go in and you want to have an experience that makes you feel like you're building <laughs> your own story, it's got a price to it. That's right. It's gonna, it's gonna cost you. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. You... What, what happens if you walk in and you say, "I'm not spending any money"? Are you going to enjoy your time at Galaxy's Edge? That's the real question. I think. I think, I think like any, like, like for example, go, looking back at like Cars Land, mm. I, I feel like if you, I don't spend, I don't spend any money at Cars mm. Land. Right. And I still enjoy the land for what yeah, it is. Yeah, of course, of course. But I definitely know, I'm at Disneyland. That's when, true. Or at my California Adventure when I'm in Cars Land. Mm -hmm. So maybe the immersiveness gets lost when you don't buy anything. So maybe if I go when I go back mm -hmm. to Galaxy's Edge and I don't buy anything, mm -hmm. 
maybe I'm gonna feel like I'm at Disneyland. Uh -huh. Maybe I don't know because like when you when you brought up earlier, like there's even like a whole other language. Um, so, but I mean that takes time. Like when you're there and you're interacting with them in lines, and when you're interacting with them, you know, at the shops, that's where the immersiveness comes from. So yeah, maybe it would be something like going through Cars Land or just walking on Pixar Pier, like looking at everything, like oh that's nice, oh that's but cute. But Pixar Pier isn't like a, like a I don't, don't want to say, but like, it's, it's not a themed land. Right. Know? Yeah. I mean, like they say, that, like there's different areas, right? But it's still just but a pier. It's, it's still just a pier. Um. So, so before going f forward, let's show you all what we got. So, Josue, what did you get at your experience this year? All right. So, start I mean, with the small thing. Yeah. Just the small. I guess I'll first. start off with how mm -hmm. I entered. Mm -hmm. So, upon entering Disneyland, the very first thing we saw were. I'm gonna put this down. Mm -hmm. Pins. Now, That's I'm right. a annual pass holder, so I bought both the regular limited edition opening day release pin. And the pass holder limited day release pin. I'll give you guys a yeah, like a closer look. And so, so the okay, thing so about this, this is, is that, the. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the, the annual pass, holders, annual pass holders one, and you, you can, can turn the Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. and it drops it down, down and it shows you the date. Really cool. And so then we'll, the other one's just the Millennium Falcon mm -hmm. and Black Spire up. Now it's got the date too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is. This was like advertised immediately when we entered. Right. Like, as we are passing Main Street's the Emporium, there are people on both that side and then also by the pin trading uh, shop that are that both have a set of different pins and are like, oh, you want the other exclusive pin? You gotta go over to that store. So it's very much like, yeah, that's a great place to start with our haul because that's when the immersion begins. Yeah. We actually, I forgot one more thing. No, no problem. And I think that that just shows also that um, oh yeah that that, that was, was that was so before great. even <laughs> looking at pins, we were presented this brand new was it limited uh, map? I, we don't, I'm pretty I, we're sure, sure it's just, just because, because of, because because of yeah. the quality. It, it is really nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got it, different it's like textures. embossed and laminated. Mm -hmm. It's got like this like really matte, nice mm -hmm. matte feeling and a glossy feeling. It's so nice. They're really nice maps. And I mean, it's basically for like if you're gonna make like you know a a, a collector oh, a collection of what you got at yeah. a, your time. It definitely feels like this will be this will probably be around up until when reservations end. <laughs> but, so, but I wouldn't expect these to be afterwards because it says back here reservations. That's up true. Until. Yeah. So maybe it's mm, until okay. June twenty third. Yeah. I mean, that's just like to celebrate the opening of the land. Like you open it and it shows the Galaxy's Edge. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so. Very much it was celebrated throughout. Throughout Disneyland, throughout all of the, yeah. yeah, as you're walking down Main Street, there were photo ops and like little signs that said "Till the Spire" mm -hmm. or "The First Order Wants You." Mm -hmm. was, they, yeah, we went through all. They that. definitely wanted to hype you up mm -hmm. for Galaxy's Edge, which I also kind of felt bad for anybody who didn't have a reservation there, because they saw all the cool stuff and they're like, That's "True, man." Well, I mean, it, it, it was just luck of the draw. If you oh, it definitely it was, it. yeah. And I think that, and I'll t we'll talk a little bit more about it. I think it's better that they have this reservation system in place because, uh, well, we'll talk a little bit about. But all right, what else did you? What else did you get? Okay. So then afterwards, I'll move on to the next smaller thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got, I got a little thirsty. I got a little quenched. So I bought the Sprite. It looks like a thermal detonator mm -hmm. grenade from so Galaxy's cool. Edge. Really cool. I also brought the Coke variant as well mm -hmm. into my backpack, but I just mm -hmm. pulled out the Sprite one. But yeah, they're really cool. Really think a little more expensive than like a regular Coke bottle, but yeah, totally understand. I also got a lot <laughs> less. Oh, I, I believe like a regular Coke bottle is like 16 fluid ounces. I think so. This is only 13.5. But I will lose three fluid ounces for this cool design. Just for the design. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I'll take out your your Coca Cola one just because I forgot mine. Okay. The house. So. And <laughs> so I guess the next one, the big ticket item, the one thing I couldn't leave Galaxy's Edge without, mm -hmm. was this pin. Ooh. You, this you pin, got like a lot of pins yesterday. This pin cost me $200. That's true. Very true. Now, what this pin does is, I basically own Disneyland, I'm just kidding. I, so you take this pin mm -hmm. after you pay for it, mm -hmm. you take it to Savi's workshop, 
and then you're allowed into Savi's workshop, and that's where I got to build this. Bam! My very own custom lightsaber. Yeah! Lightsaber! And that's that all you hear work. because, yeah, there's no blade part actually. <laughs> that's okay though. But I love it. I love the experience. I love the designs that they offer. Super beautiful. And then maybe a year when I have more money to just spend around Nilly Willy, I might buy another one. I was thinking that too, but hey, that's cool. You know, for like a $200 pin, you got a lightsaber for free? That's right, yeah, cool. yeah. $200 and you get the lightsaber for Yeah, you get the free. lightsaber for free. That's that's pretty, that's a good deal. I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. and, and so was that, was that everything that you got? That is everything wow. I got because the rest of my money went to experiencing uh, Ronto roasters. I bought right. a Ronto wrap. Yeah. I brought blue milk. I brought the other. Right. I bought the other Coke bottle. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that was that's everything I bought. Yeah. So, Mr. E, do you want to talk about um, what you got? I stayed on the very minimalist side mm -hmm. of things. Um, got a pin, just like mm -hmm. uh, Josue. I'm not a pass holder though, so I got the. Uh, Limited release right, one. Right, so the same one that I was showing. Uh, I really don't know how long they're gonna have this one out for. You know, uh, I, I think it they're goes putting until limited June release. I would assume. Could be a June. They still had a good amount when we. Yeah, had. for sure. Um, and then of course, um, I want to talk about this before this. Yes. This one's gonna piss me off a little. No. Oh, oh, oh. Um. All right. Let's see if you guys can read that. That's sad. That says Sabak. Uh, this is the game we see, and I'm a huge fan of the Solo movie. Uh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't like it, but we see Lando and uh, Han Solo play Sabacc for mm -hmm. the Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Um, Falcon. <laughs> Falcon. Um, so yeah, and uh, it seems like a very simple game. Very cheap too, uh, I'd say. Uh, $15 for this. Mm -hmm. You know, I would think this, they would put $30 on something like this, but yeah. I guess not. I would have expected that too. Yeah, but mm -hmm. hey, good bad. price. I might um, we found it at the. We bought that at Toy Darien. Toy yeah, Toy, Toy Darien. Yeah, because yeah, if you see, there's a Toy Darien. Ah, on the floor. Well, yeah, that, would <laughs> so, <laughs> that would make sense then. So yeah, this is. Uh, we're looking forward to playing this game. Soon. And mm -hmm. if you want to see a video of us playing this game, mm -hmm. let us know in the game comment section night. down below. Exactly, we'll do like a. We will, maybe we'll even be part of one of our summer live streams. Yeah. Oh. Let us know if you want to see like a video exclusive of us playing, or we'll play in a live stream. So, yeah. And then, this one is not mine. It's, uh, it's Toby's. It's, Toby's. it's uh, a BB-8 unit. Mm -hmm. it's All a BB black. A BB unit, my bad, not BB-8. Mm -hmm. All black. Um, Why don't you turn it on? It doesn't turn on. Why doesn't it turn on? I uh, thought you bought it yesterday. Oh, I didn't buy it, but, no, but uh, we Toby did buy it yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, it doesn't turn on anymore. Yeah. Uh, that's very uh, triggering, mm -hmm. very upsetting. Mm -hmm. uh, this was not cheap. It's ninety nine dollars to build. Plus, if you want to get the little SD card, that <laughs> makes it. It's called a personality. Chip, right, and I find it very stupid because it doesn't really get any other personality, and it's very mute and quiet. That's true. So maybe we just got a messed up BB unit. Um, One of like compared yeah. compared to the noise that like lights here. Like, that's yeah. very loud. You guys yeah. have been hearing me that's going. Like, yeah, you hear And that's that. just without the and, light. And and supposedly you know when you walk around the land, whatever SD card you have in, a personality <laughs> card that you have in when you're walking around, yeah, like, uh, like it like will interact. <laughs> but we did not hear it interact. No. Well, anyway. Toby did. Toby, yeah, but I Toby think was, he was wearing. Yeah, he Toby was wearing it, but we couldn't hear anything. Um. What else is wrong with this thing? Uh, yeah, it just doesn't turn on. And uh, we'll try putting in other batteries and we'll keep you guys up to date either yeah. on Instagram, Twitter, or Yelp. So mm -hmm. follow us on our social media, at TLEV Media, and we'll let you know uh, what happens with this droid because as of right now, yeah, for the price of $99, oh, really what it comes out to with, with the tax so is like $108, yeah, it's like, $107, it's like, it's like $107, $108, and it's just, it's, I mean, for that, that's really upsetting. But I'll tell, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, because you also have to factor in the experience, and maybe it's just our unit that isn't working. Uh, <laughs> for, for the price, yeah, too, the I price mean, that, come yeah, on. They should be, they should be like this, where... That, look at that, that thing is like, still working, it's heavy metal, issues, it's ready yeah. to be used all the time. This thing... Used for a couple hours, not even a full yeah. day. We only took it out of the box to drive around when we were in line, and 
I mean, that was that was really it. Uh, we were waiting in line both for for the lightsaber experience and also when we were outside, um, outside of Disneyland, uh, just to test how far it would go, and that's it. And then then we put it back in the box mm -hmm. and went to bed. Came back and it's not working. So, yeah, for that price, it's it's kind of upsetting, but very upsetting. So yeah, very upsetting for a mystery. Well, we'll see. Cross our fingers that it still mm -hmm. works. So. What I bought was, can you hand me all of those? So I also got um, a uh, $200 pin, but I got a different version, oh my goodness. But I got a different version from the one that, that Josue got. Uh, this pin was for, for like elemental, uh, so it shows very much like the, the nature. And uh, it was cool because I also got um, an elemental lightsaber uh, for free with this $200 pin. And so I think it was honestly a great, great, great deal. And I very much liked the experience. Like that's, I mean, that video, we've already posted it and that was, that was so awesome. And it really was like for, for Star Wars fans, such an incredible experience just to build your own lightsaber. And the moment when we're all raising our lightsabers up and they're all illuminated, it was so, like, it gave me chills. It and, was and, and I'll tell you what, and I, and I forgot to mention this, mm -hmm. is that, now that you brought it up, is that, if anything, not only is this a great deal, mm -hmm. but you're actually getting more bang for your buck, because, uh, as, like, a, I've dabbled into, like, lightsabers and custom-built lightsabers. Okay. A custom-built battle-ready F with, like, the FX chips lightsabers will easily run you more than $200. Oh, really? Built, like, on Etsy mm, or something like that. Oh, yeah. wow. These things are not cheap. If you want, like, a really good custom-made one that's uh -huh. made out of metal, mm -hmm. it'll easily cost you 200 bucks. Yeah. So, um, here, we're getting one that's 200 bucks. but not only are we getting a custom-built lightsaber that is battle-ready and the pin, mm -hmm. we're also getting the extra experience. That's true. Because, it, yeah, if you buy one online, it's just going to arrive to you like, package. Like, Yay! I also will have to say that, like, unlike Josue's, mine isn't fully metal. I actually have, like, a leather binding, and that is so cool. Uh, the wood is not actual wood, but um, maybe I'll change it to actual wood <laughs> if there's a way to do it. Um, but, I mean, overall, like, the feel for, like, both of them is it's heavier than any of the... Uh, like Target or like the one that's in Star Traders, um, but it is plastic such one. a great, like for any Star Wars nerd who can of course afford the $215 that it, like comes out to with tax, like this is, this is great. You um, also get- Yeah, like the blade the actually, sheet. yeah. The sheath, the sheath also comes in with carry the blade, around. yeah. And then obviously the blade part the as well. The blade you also get, yeah. which also I will demonstrate. All right, because there you go. That's it's just so cool. It's, it's red. So cool. Yeah, I got I got a red kyber crystal inside. It looks very orange. And again, you. these are customizable as well. Mm -hmm. So I can I can yeah. open it up inside, pull out the crystal, mm -hmm. and I can go and change it out. I can use Thomas's crystal in my there lightsaber. All right. I also, to add to my overall outfit, I got myself, it's what it was called like a lightsaber belt clip. So that way I could just, you know, for, for lightsabers that have a hilt like this, it hangs from here. Uh, can I demonstrate with yours? Yeah. Please. And then for lightsabers like Josue's where the bottom of the hilt has like a more of a circular shape, uh, you just press the sides and just slides in. So like, again, adding with the fact that, you know, a lot of the lightsaber parts are interchangeable and even like the belt clip is is meant to be used for either hilts and i think that's really really cool because that way you're not limited in your immersion so um for me all of this cost about like 250 dollars oh because I forgot that because I also wanted to, on the other side of like the, the aggressive strong side, I saw uh, this most the, the really adorable uh, Wicket Ragdoll. I don't know why he's called an Ewok on here, but it's it's Wicket. It's most certainly Wicket. And he it, like he feels like a ragdoll and it's just like, feel him. It, he's just so <laughs> cute. He's adorable yeah, and, yeah. and I love it. 
So yeah, no. Exactly, he's ready to take down uh, yeah, the first yeah, order. No. Uh, no, no. And so I think, yeah. Overall, all this came out to about like two hundred and fifty dollars for me, and that's a lot. That's a lot for for many people, including myself. But I knew that this was gonna be the last time I go to Disneyland in a long time. Um, so. I, I wanted to make the most of it because, like, unlike Josue, I'm not, I'm no longer an annual pass holder. Uh, <laughs> my pass holder actually expired um, May 27th, so just four days before yeah, the man. opening. But oh well. Anyway, um, and it, again with the droid, the droid was like a hundred dollars. Yeah. So and and also everything is not super expensive. Out there. No, I, mean, no. I spent a total. I mean, thirty dollars. That's still not on the cheap side. No, but you know. You don't have to get the pin, which right. is a fit, sixteen dollars, but you know, you still can get a card set or or even um, uh, the rag dolls. Mm -hmm. and so much cheaper. There's so much stuff that's also uh, on a very lower price. Yeah. yeah. So that that's our haul. So yeah. thank you for watching our haul. And now we're gonna talk about honestly, like over overall, what we thought of the land. So Smuggler's Run. Amazing. Amazing. I, I definitely. It was unlike anything you could ever experience, and I know there's a lot of people out there who are saying like, "Oh, it's not, it's not good." And it's very few people that are saying this, but some people are saying, "I didn't like it," or "It's just like Star Tours." Mm -hmm. no. no, this no, is no. nothing like Star Tours. No, no. While I under, I see why somebody would compare it to Star Tours. Mm -hmm. This is nothing like Star no. Tours. And my best way to describe Smuggler's Run would be no way because you have to experience, experience it yourself. It. With yeah, a different group of people. Each I think time. yeah, I think it's best when you're actually with a group like us who <laughs> were like fully invested in this. Like we were actually piloting it. We had a uh, during our experience yeah. in Smuggler's Run, we had a we were five people, mm -hmm. but there's six occupations in the in the ride, and so we had this lady join us, and she had no idea who we were. She had no idea what she was getting into, <laughs> and so after you know you can watch the video of us when mm -hmm. we do Smuggler's yes. Run, you can see how excited we got. And yeah. the first thing she said to us when we got off was, you guys are the best guys to ride this yeah. ride with. <laughs> so definitely do yourself a favor, bring all your Star Wars mm -hmm. friends to ride this because yeah. it'll be unforgettable. Oh, absolutely. It was so cool. <laughs> um, I think another thing in that why people might feel like it is like a Star Tours is just because when you're watching it on a video like what ours, even though you hear us yeah. going crazy yeah. about it, you st it still kind of just looks like a projection, but when you're actually in the cockpit, when you're actually looking outside, it doesn't feel like you're looking at a screen. It doesn't feel like, in comparison, it doesn't feel like you're looking at, uh, let's say, uh, the the ride in the Justice League ride at Six Flags or uh, something like. Um, Transformers. Transformers. Well, Transformers is a little bit better. I would say Simpsons. Simpsons looks like looks like a video game. Yeah, no. Um, but I, I also think you know that they do the details, even the detailing mm -hmm. of, of the framing of the Millennium yes. Falcon. You know, you're not seeing a clear yes. image on front in front of you. It's it's like you have the stuff in front of you. Also, the the, the framing mm -hmm. of the ship in front mm -hmm. of you. So. Even when you're walking in and you're like waiting for other groups before you go in and do the do the ride. You don't know where the other people go because, yeah. like, it, it's just organized so well it's the magic. that exactly there is this magic that you feel like you are the you guys are the or you are the pilots and no one else is the pilots. Uh, food options. What do we think of the food options? Great. Well, we did only get to experience quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had no chance to go to Docking Bay yeah, Seven. That's true. Or the but, cantina. Or, or the, the cantina. cantina. And I'm gonna talk about that later. Um, but we, I decided to go to Ronto Roasters because mm -hmm. that was the first thing that caught my eye when all the menu stuff came out. Mm -hmm. And I tried the Ronto Wrap, mm -hmm. the afternoon one, not the morning one. Right. Uh, right. It's good. It definitely. I think if I wanted a snack or if I wanted just something like to eat to like uh -huh. hold me off for the rest of the day i would definitely go back around to it and good. it might once the land opens that might be like one of the big reasons I would go like to Star Wars, like Galaxy's Edge. I'd be like, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to <laughs> Like if nobody I'm going with loves Star Wars, uh -huh. but I'm hungry, and be like, hold up, I need to get a Ronto wrap. Uh, okay, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, so all that I really had for, for the food wise was um, I tried 
the blue milk and the green milk. Blue and I think, uh, I think very much the blue, I think they're both great flavors. Yeah. Um, they're very different. They're very different flavors. You have a chance um, to try both. They're both, they're both fruity. Yeah, and if you have a chance to, like Mr. E said, if you have a chance to try both, try both. I would say that I preferred, I personally preferred the green milk as it had the bitterness of the, of, or the tart of the uh, passion fruit. Uh, where the blue milk was very sweet. Yeah, the blue milk's sweeter. Mm -hmm. The blue, the blue milk has a Dole Whip flavor to it. That's what so, yeah, Mr. E was saying that um, it, it almost tastes like Dole Whip. So it's it's really it's up to you. Try both. Let us know what you think. Um, and so now, but that was about it. Um, the the popcorn smelled really good. Uh, Ronto Roaster smelled really good. Docking Base Seven Food and Cargo smelled really really good. Really didn't get to try those. Uh, the Arabash Coca Cola was delicious, yeah. and <laughs> yeah, the Arabash Sprite was pretty good too. Arabash Sprite was really good, uh, but th that's so the reason why. Oh, or unless you want, did you want to say anything about the food? No, I didn't try them. Okay, sure. and so the reason why I didn't get to try any of that um, of the other food uh, was because the four hours that they give you during the reservation are not enough time. <laughs> They're not. So I mean, we tried. Well, Maybe if it's planned well, mm. because like mm -hmm. w the only thing we didn't get to experience was like Oga's Cantina yeah. and do a little bit of like more shopping. Yeah, sure. And like Docky Bay 7, but right. like for the most part, we got like the big ticket yeah, stuff. Yeah, we that, did, mm -hmm. we did, but that was like, you also, can't do everything. Oh, yeah, you yeah, You can't yeah. do everything in those four hours. I mean, and if you, uh, my head, like... Maybe if you're the early you, morning crowd. Yeah. Maybe. If you're the early that, morning crowd about, or the late, or the late, late, or the crowd, late crowd. Because crowd. you have three hours mm -hmm. to the park by yourself, which if you don't yeah. know what I'm saying, understanding is for a reservation, for, and this is just for the people from here to Maine. But to June, June 23rd, yeah. June, 20, June 23rd is, while yes, you do have four hours inside of Galaxy's Edge, your first and last hour will be super packed because yes. your first hour, you're going to be let in during the last group's last exactly. hour. Mm -hmm. And your last hour, the next group will be let in during your last hour. Mm -hmm. So you only get really two hours to the land to yeah. yourself. And, and, you that, that, and, you and you notice it a lot. Mm -hmm. Because at the beginning and at the end, Smuggler's Run will be 90 minutes yeah. longer. And then in the two hours that like, it's just you guys. It's a walk It'll home. be like thirty to like ten minutes. It, yeah, it dropped. It literally dropped to ten <laughs> minutes. That was insane. Um, but the, I think one of the things uh, that really made it so that we couldn't enjoy the cantina was that yeah, with the cry, with mm -hmm. the crowd, as soon as as we entered, they try to push you to go to the cantina. So yeah. in your first hour, it's packed, and during those two hours that you're alone, everybody's still in line for the cantina. In the last hour, then the group that's coming in is going straight to the cantina. Yeah, I think if we went straight to the cantina, we wouldn't have gone that that Jedi experience. Exactly, and that was that was experience. that was another thing was Oof. the fact that we got our registra uh, registration oh, our reservations. Right. We went in, we paid for our lightsabers at like five forty, and they told us, "All right, come back at seven. So we did mm. Droid Depot, we tried some of the food, came back at 7, and they were like, oh, your, your purple group? Oh, you're going to have to come back in 40 minutes. So then we were like, okay, so let's ride Smuggler's Run. We finished Smuggler's Run, we're taking photos, but then we're all already like, no, no, it's, it's, it's almost 40 minutes. Come on, we can't take any more photos, we got to go. So then we went, and they were like, oh, purple group? Oh, you got to come back in, in 40 minutes. So then we were like, oh, okay, what do we do now? Okay, let's go try blue milk, green milk, try Ronto Roasters, uh, but then we should probably head back. So there was about 90 minutes of us dragging our feet because we weren't sure what to do in regards to something that we already paid for. Um, and they're just, I mean, the experience as you've seen in our video, was amazing. Like we, that that was just. It felt like like as Josue describes it in the video. It's it's like a ritual. It feels very much like a religious event, and so it's fantastic. And I'm glad we did it because there's no way that it can stay that way. There's no way uh -huh. that that 
Disneyland will be able to keep it that way because it just was so if, long. If they do, then that means you're probably gonna have to register and, and reser reserve like a few maybe. days, a month, yeah. a week before you're even. Yeah, you're, maybe doing it before you even get yeah. to Yeah, and that, that's probably something that will come around and possibly you have to do. Honestly, I would prefer that instead of, you know, that way we could have experienced the cantina. Mm. Uh, I mean, of course. Uh, you will see very, very soon in a video, Josue, because Josue is going, uh, went, or is going, <laughs> okay, it's June 1st when we're recording this, but Josue is going June 5th, and he's going to go to the cantina, he's going to film the cantina, get drunk. And, he's gonna, <laughs> yeah, and he's going to film, like, the <laughs> overall area, so that'll be a video that all of you will see, so don't worry, you'll see that. Like this video so I can afford the oven. There you go. It's a $42 drink. <gasps> Is it? It's a forty-two dollar drink it's because the Yubna? Uh, it's the Yubna because it comes in the collector's cup and it's oh. made of like wood and it like details the battle of like Endor on it. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh my goodness! That's you gotta lot. get the Yubna. <laughs> That's so lot. like this video so I can get there the Yubna. You go. Subscribe, <laughs> hit that notification bell, all that. Visit our website. So, visit our website. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's something we could recommend to the people who didn't get registered? Re uh, reservation. reservation. So because, like, I think the reservations work so well, th like we said, like, and like Josue described with the different times, is is that work that it was in a small capacity. Yeah. The capacity, uh, or the standby line might be super long mm -hmm. uh, when, when the o land opens without reservation, mm -hmm. and it's going to be very, very different. Like, I think we'll, we'll never ever see the Millennium Falcon at 30 minutes ever again, no. or at 10 minutes well, ever again. Maybe. Well, in the I future, feel, future. No, but in the future, future. I feel like it's gonna be like Radiator world. Springs Racers. Radiator Springs Racers is always like a 90 minute or like 120 minute ride. <laughs> Speaking of which, yesterday, because everybody was so focused on Star Wars, mm -hmm. Radiator Springs Racers was down to 30 minutes. Yeah, that's insane. That is insane. That is insane. And so it's not going to be like that when anybody he could just walk into the land. No, no. So I think if you have a reservation, definitely take advantage of it because it's no, no. it's going to, uh, we're already seeing how it's changing the culture at the Disneyland parks and it's only gonna see, it's only a matter of time before uh, it changes even further when it actually opens. So, uh, I mean, overall amazing experience. Like uh, it was everything that we could have dreamed of as Star Wars fans. We weren't able to do everything in four hours, which really, really sucks. Um, and so, uh, I mean, we wish that that could have changed a little bit. Um, but if you plan on doing, building your own lightsaber, go early, make sure that you get a reservation time early. Um, and, and, and- Go win the cantina. Go in the canteen. <laughs> Just wait stay in the, line. wait in the cantina line. I, I mean, but no, also wait in the smugglers line because that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think that about wraps up like our honest review of Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. yeah. Any last thoughts? No. Um, this land is amazing, mm -hmm. and I, I know a lot of people mm, when it finally opens might hate it just because it's going to be so packed. Yeah. Sure. But definitely give this land a chance, even mm -hmm. if you're not a big Star Wars fan. Yeah. I think yeah. there's something there for everybody. I think so too. Yeah. Um, Be ready for more changes because Rise of the Resistance. That's right. That's right. Rise of the Resistance is gonna happen as well. Yeah. Definitely, just look around. Literally, mm -hmm. take it all in. Because even though like we like when we went in, we went straight for um, you know Batu and like the city and everything like that. Mm -hmm. We didn't like even look around like where Rise of the Resistance is gonna That's be. That's true. That's true. No. So we even no, missed we that. Didn't. There's mm -hmm. so much there. So much. Ah, I can't wait to There's go back. So much. So yeah, yeah. There we go. So if you like this video. Make sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Please, uh, it'll help us tremendously, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it'll get me that uh, yub note. <laughs> Have you been to Galaxy's Edge yet? What are your thoughts on Galaxy's Edge? Let us know in the comment section down below. And of course, you know we got uh, social media too, Twitter and Instagram. Go, go over there. Look at the pictures. There you go. Look yeah. at like news the and stuff yes, like that. Come yeah. on, check out our website tlmedia.com. Yes. Link in the description down below. And of course. I'm Thomas. I'm Josue. I'm Mystery. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah!